Welcome to the Wilson Center Middle East Program Series on Art Activism in the Middle East and North Africa region, which features artists from MENA who leverage their work as a form of political and social expression. My name is Brooke Sherman, and I'm honored to be joined by Murad Subai, a renowned artist and activist from Yemen. Murad led a series of five street art campaigns from 2012 to 2015, and in 2016 was awarded the Freedom of Expression Award by the Index on Censorship Organization, among other international accolades. Welcome, Murad. Thank you so much, Brooke, and uh, for all your audience, I'm, I'm happy to, to be here with you. Well, it's our pleasure to speak with you today. Thank you. So I'd love to start by learning more about your journey as an artist. So when did you first decide to pursue art professionally um, in Yemen? Well, I, it's, it's a long story because I started when I was like uh, young, uh, like a child. Uh, mostly I was I started in 2001 uh, in art, but uh, in a company that uh, my studies in the school in addition to my sport, uh, which I was doing. And uh, with the support of the family, I continued to do art until the revolution came in 2011. So I started like street art after that, you know, after the conflict happens in, in Sana'a, uh, military conflict that divided the city. So um, yeah, I, it was like the, the first uh, uh, campaign that I launched, uh, which led to other series of uh, campaigns inside Yemen and outside, in addition to the spread of, of uh, uh, graffiti and street art seen in Yemen. And uh, yes, uh, this is, you can summarize it. In the beginning, it was like, I'm self-taught artist. Um, I never joined any academy or school of art. And I graduated from Sana'a University Literature, of English Literature. So yes, it's it's like that. The first phase is ten years around that uh, to be in contemporaries trying to to do things. The first ten years, and then later, eleven years for the uh, uh, for the street art. Yeah, but professionally, I'm doing street art now and and activism and graffiti something like that. And what are the major themes that you covered in that first series of campaigns? Uh, well, uh, this is depends because uh, if I if I divide my uh, my uh, experience in, in in art in street art uh, exactly, it will be in three phases, which is like the revolution and then the war and then the the exile or the refuge, which is now I'm in based in France. Um, the first it it was like you can see the, the first campaign. It was called the the, the walls uh, color colored the walls of your street, which is to invite the people to cover the, the bullets, holes, and RBG and other things in, in the middle of Sana'a, uh, which uh, witnessed one of the most hot uh, uh, conflicts back then. Uh, and then um, moved to, uh, after a couple of months, I moved to another uh, theme, which is enforced disappearance, which is a very important campaign that, uh, that lead to you know, trigger a different uh, result like uh, the appearance of people who are disappeared after three decades and uh, the discussion in the parliament and also the awareness of for the people in Yemen about a very uh, important issue. It, it leads to many, too many uh, things. And I mean, it, it longs, it's, it needs like a long time to discuss this. And then I moved to other like campaign, which is 12 hours, which this is the name of it. The first, uh, the second campaign was the walls remember their faces means about the first disappearance. And the second, which the third, it is the 12 hours, which is um, uh, to discuss 12 issues uh, that Yemenis faced at the moment, like sectarianism, like uh, terrorism, like uh, drone attacks, like um, uh, by Americans, of course, uh, like uh, poverty, like, you know, a spread of weapons and many and civil wars and many other uh, issues, you know. Um, so I moved from campaign to campaign. Um, the most important uh, experience, because I'm not working like a, a, alone, like I go to do wall and something. So I design a campaign, a whole project like, and then I invite people because the participation of people, even if they are not professional, you know, sometimes the people who are in the street, they, st they started to come to, uh, to participate. So uh, the, the participation of the community, this is the most significant and fundamental thing in my work. 
uh, because it created like a kind of debate in the street and awareness and the people when they finish with a with the campaign they came back home and to discuss and something they so they obtain it by themselves so they represent it by themselves as well um, so yes it's it's like this this is the first phase which is the revolution and then the war broke out of course in the revolution I, I did like uh, another one which is called the dawn of sculpture i did one of an installation of iron around two meters and and half uh, in the middle of the city which is represent the unity of yemen when the yemenis uh, a long time ago before three thousand years ago they they uh, started to create a, uh, what we call it today a state so it's like a tribes and they together and they connected all of their gods in one simple called El Moqa. And then uh, because the, the country, I, I started back then in 2015, uh, January, to, to see it's it's before, of course, I see this, but uh, to see it evidently that th there is a kind of division in Yemen starts to be clearly that we are moving into the fragment era, the fragment uh, time. So um, yes, so I created this simple to tell that we were 3000 years ago, obtained this and we created like a state, you know, so we we can just create our, our state now. It's, we need just a motive. Um, and then the, the war broke out into, uh, it's actually, uh, the, the war in Yemen broke out, um, you know, started in two phases. The invasion of the militia supported by Iran in 2014, September, and then uh, the the mess, which is the war led by Saudi Arabia and, and their uh, alliance uh, like Emirates and America and other things. So we are trapped as Yemenis to be clear that we are trapped between uh, two uh, Joes are crushing us, unfortunately, and our dreams. So um, yes, in, in 2000, uh, after the war, I started to launch another campaign called Ruins. Because uh, I needed like a half uh, or like a month to to got the uh, the shock of the of the explosions and the missiles that we, we were hearing and we felt uh, and the, the death we see and like you, you can walk just like 500 meters or 300 meters or 500 meters in in every part of the city and you see destruction because of the war. So um, I started to paint in the in the walls that witnessed the death of the citizens innocent like houses schools and uh, i i go there to paint uh, something whether a story about them or to uh, denounce in general uh, uh, represent this issue so um, yes this campaign lasted for about two years of the war and uh, voila just um, uh, continue ruins and then i i took a space like uh, there was seven months difference uh, before I started another campaign uh, because, you know, you fought in, in, in a kind of um, uh, frustration, a deep frustration, but I came up with different project and, and bigger one, which is phases of war, which last until this moment where I'm doing in around, you know, around uh, out of Yemen, uh, where I started this uh, project uh, to depicate the war, the face of the war, and, and started it in, in Hodeida, which is in the east of uh, west of Yemen, and uh, which witnessed one of the most horrible uh, situation, which the spread of disease called the cholera and diphtheria and other things, which is in the in, in before. It's like the disease from the last century or before. So, uh, in addition to the malnutrition, starvation, and other things. And of course, this is happening in every part of the country. And this is why I moved also to Sana'a, you know, because I'll tell you something as a street artist and you work in the street, it's not really friendly to, it's not easy to, to work in, in, in a country. I mean, to, to just to do one wall, it's like you are going to risk your life sometimes or to risk to be uh, detained or to be investigated and have this many times for, for me and the people who were accompanying me. Um, so yes, just uh, a little bit, uh, no, it's, it's extremely, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, like uh, dangerous, uh, but I, 
I managed to do this, you know, usually I, I was like to do every, you know, a lot of work, for example, in the in the situation of ruins, I, I took like in two years, I did like 14 uh, active um, um, activity, like 14 activity in, in the range of in, in the rate of my work, it's nothing, you know, I usually do more than 20 or 30 or something like this, because I move fast. So in, in, in the war, it's different to work as an artist, really difficult, but also you are under many pressures from different uh, authorities and you are like um, risking many things. So we'll go back to uh, phases of war and uh, which I did two walls, uh, three walls in, in the west of the country and then two walls in, in Sana'a. And then after that, I left Yemen. Uh, I stayed like I would say uh, in Egypt for one year until I got this, um, uh, the Artistic Protection Fund, which is an American program uh, that uh, gave me the, the residency for one year in France. And then I did it in, in, in Aix-en-Provence in the south of France uh, for one year. And then I continue uh, my activism around. This is another phase of, of my uh, activism, which I started to discuss like the arm sales, the terrorism as well, because there is another kind of terrorism, which is not the terrorism we see it in, in, the, in the media, which is like just to represent the, uh, the radicals Muslims uh, in, in our countries. But also there is a terrorism, which is international terrorism, because uh, what we see, in, uh, for example, I am as an Arabic person and I came from Yemen, I, I felt it that the people here are also victims to the propagandas to be type, you know, to uh, stereotype all the people who came from them. And there is kind of fears in, the, in their eyes about you, your color, your, your hair and and uh, your language also. Sometimes I was like a conservative not to speak in Arabic in the in the street because people are, you know, a, a little bit. So it's, it's a bit, you, you know, difficult. And also I continue to discuss the war as well. Well, I just like this, you know, so it's like revolution, war, and then now in this situation like this. Yeah. Thank you so much for breaking down kind of the phases of your work and also the challenges that you've faced, not only on the streets in Yemen, but also even through today and kind of how those, those challenges that you faced have evolved. So um, going back to one of your earlier points, I know a very important part of your work is engaging with the local community and with engaging Yemenis um, in particular during the first phase. So I'm curious if that was always one of your goals before you even started your very first campaign or if that kind of evolved um, organically as you got out on the street and um, started, started your first campaign. If I understand your question correctly, that you ask me about the uh, the community and the uh, the role of the community in my work, well, actually, uh, I believe that the 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 campaigns in the, uh, until I left Yemen, they were connected in one line with the revolution. So uh, my goal was like I want people to be part of it, and this is why uh, because you have to know that Yemen is before I, I go deeper. Uh, Yemenis, we are we are skeptical people because there is a lot of dirty money from outside and, and different agendas from, uh, you know, from many uh, you know uh, countries around the world in Yemen, so and regional and international. So uh, the first question you'll be asked in Yemen, uh, where do you bring your, your tools and the color? I mean, you will not do this for free and you, you need to like, uh, and, and it's a reasonable question to be asked. This is why I was always careful not to accept any kind of fund because uh, from any, anyone, just uh, the only thing I was accepting from people themselves to bring their tools or from friends or people that I know clearly, they have no connections with politics or with, with sites. Um, this is why I reject many organizations, many um, businessmen and uh, also political uh, people. Uh, so, um, and, and then the revolution about the, uh, um, the participation of the people, this is give them a confidence that this person, because the confidence, it should be built with, with time. It's not coming like once, you know, it never just, you say, I, I didn't receive and, and uh, or, or I didn't accept money and then they will believe you. So I, I found that 
with time, the, the people started to engage so much hardly and also in, inside the idea, inside the, the, the scene. And in addition that I find after the, the first campaign, there's other campaigns, not only just in Sana'a, it started to appear in Adan, in the south, in Taiz, in Hudaida, in Adan, in, in Eb, in like Hadramaut, in, in the biggest cities in Yemen. And they started to people to obtain the idea and to, to, st to start like uh, their own project. So uh, the, the first thing, so because they felt it can be, because the idea of it, the art should be from the people to the people by the people. So uh, and also about the participation of the people, uh, you have to know that uh, they give it a, a power more than I, I was imagining. You know, even they protected us, in, for example, in, in the terms of we were strong enough uh, after the revolution in, uh, in the terms of the walls remember their faces, which is uh, about the enforced disappearance. I was timing to pin the walls of the enforced disappeared I painted in the, in front of the uh, the house of the uh, the dictator, okay, the president that we took down, and then in front of the intelligence offices, in front of the the second powerful man, which is Ali Mohsen, general, and in and next to his office, you know, in many places that I, I uh, we had the files started to open and people start to talk and who are th uh, their hands swapped by this issue. So, uh, and, but uh, how I can do this while I do, I'm just a person, you know, but I, because I was relying on the people, you know, I was relying that I, okay, I'm protected. I believe that we are strong enough. So uh, the participation of the people, it, it was like um, in itself, in every campaign that I was doing in the street, it, it was like, when you speak about People, I'm not speaking about like I just only intellectuals or, or activists. I'm speaking about passer price, people in the street, uh, normal people, ordinary. I mean, uh, they have uh, normal jobs. And uh, they started to have a debate. It's like a protest in the same time. You know, uh, imagine there is people who came to participate, to paint, and the others who came to give uh, tools like colors, uh, paint, uh, brushes, even sometimes they re we're rejecting to tell us their names, you know, because, and this has started like after a couple of months of the idea, because they realized that this is an honest act, an honest initiative uh, to, to be toward the, the community. Um, the most important other thing, which is the debate that was created in the street about any issue. For example, in the first disappearance, it's, uh, we, we painted with the enforced disappearance families around 102 phases of enforced disappearance with the reputation. So we had in result in four cities around 800 uh, mural, uh, 800 phases. So because I didn't just do the 102 phases in one swans. No, it's sometimes start accumulation. Like I started with the, with three, uh, two, two phases and then ended up with 102 with the repetition of them. So we have some of them we are repeated 14 times, some of them were repeated five times only. So uh, this is the, the, the discussion happens after the discussion about the uh, terrorism happens, the discussion about drone attacks, the discussion about, about civil war, sectarianism. This give uh, like uh, in that action is different. It's, it was unique. Uh, and by all, it's not my words. I should not like say this because uh, I'm the one who led this. But uh, but any anyone and, and many researchers who did uh, research about my work, they they see more than this, you know, because the discussion and the provocation inside these campaigns was enormous, was a very important. But as I told you, the work came and took out many things, you know. And uh, that's it. There was like another event, which is I, I was launching. It's called the Open Day of Art, which is I tried to connect many cities in the war, in the time of war, which is um, because we are one people, but different politics, policies uh, that supported by other regional and international countries. So uh, I was trying to make this uh, like a bridges between people in different cities in Yemen, but also with other people around the world. Like I, I did this event in the same day of 15 March, between 2015 and 2020, 
before the uh, during the uh, uh, the um, the COVID, and I connect like people they go in the street in the same day, which is 15th March of every year, in in the same time in every city, like in Seoul, like in Reading in UK, like in Paris happens twice. Like in, in Madagascar, happens in two cities in many times. And in many, many cities in Yemen, I mean, in addition to other cities and in, uh, like in, in India, like, uh, so it was like trying to create a bridge between people, even if you have different, uh, imagine different languages, different geographic, different religion. So art used to unite, can unite us. I mean, uh, it doesn't give us solutions, of course, about the, the financial and the, the political situation, but it sends a message that, we can overcome our differences if we just sit on a table and to discuss and to find really a background for our for our life as a human beings. And I will quote this uh, from Martin Luther King when he said, uh, "We have to learn to live together as brothers, or to die as or to perish as as fools." And that's it. Yeah. Sure, that's um, really amazing that you were able to transcend not only. Um, you know, different communities in within Yemen, but also across borders um, to kind of spark debate. So as part of that, I'm, I'm curious, you know, as you mentioned that you were able to bring all of these different people of various backgrounds and, and geographies to one discussion. How did people across generations, so from different um, generations and different maybe socioeconomic backgrounds, respond to your artwork differently? And how did they, um, thinking about these debates that you kind of hosted and fostered through your work, how did, um, how did those debates kind of um, play out in terms of people from different uh, generations and, and backgrounds? Well, actually, the, the time that I launched the, you know, uh, the campaign, the first one, was a crucial moment. You know, the city was divided into half, you know, one south, one north. Uh, the north is uh, in the hands of the regime, and the south, uh, the, the, uh, the north, uh, it's in the hands of, of uh, uh, the second powerful man, which is called, uh, they, they, they call themselves the protector of the revolution while they are stealing the revolution. Uh, so the, there was just only one line, which is a red line. It's a, a very important street in, in Sana'a, which is like a main street in Sana'a that divided the city. So um, I, I couldn't like work in, uh, like started the campaign in any side of, the, of those because I was like, when I started, like, because I was prohibited, I need the permission. But there was like 200 meters that separate or 150 separate the, those forces and they have no uh, power in, in this because it's a, it's a place for like, just to pass as a, as a citizen, but not as a soldier. Even if you, if you are a soldier, you have to change your clothes and to hide even ID cards if you have. Uh, so I, I started because I didn't find, okay, I will start in, the, in this area. And <laughs> I started for one, for one week and I didn't realize that the people needed to end this, uh, actually this situation actually. So they floated in one week into this spot with colors. It was the, the walls, they were a mess of, of uh, slogans of, uh, of uh, hate, death, uh, and through revolution and, and through system and through regime. So I started there to raise, okay, this is the word of the people. And we started to pin there. We defaced the, uh, the, those slogans anyway. So, and, and, uh, and then it was a message from the people that they are tired of this situation when they get down to start to participate. So it's not just only about colors and street art. It's deeper, actually. It's it's deeper, but uh, and and it's a, like a voice of people. And imagine just the people they did, were not just to come alone. They came with their uh, with their families. Uh, even people they had like a big walls in the city. They came to invite the, uh, me to do the campaign there. And what happens? This is what happens after. You know, I continue in other walls because they invite me. Uh, and the campaign to continue the, this uh, movement, you know, to continue this uh, this action, you know. So um, 
Well, I, I don't know what is the, the second because I forget. What is the second part of the question? No, I was just asking. So if um, if you found that people of different generations, so people, you know, were young people or older people, they were all engaging as part of your work. It was oh. it was across generations and, and across socioeconomic backgrounds. You know, you were bringing diverse people together through your work. Exactly. There was no differences now, because if I tell you this is what the people need to end in, in the city, it, it was we witnessed like for a couple of months of a mass of, uh, of conflict inside the city and the, the people, they were afraid. So I think this is uh, this is why uh, I didn't face any kind of, of rejection from the people. Never. And until I left Yemen, there was no rejection from the people. The only rejection, it was just only from political sides uh, who want whether to, to take you under their wings or to try to oppress you or to tease you, uh, like to, um, to, you know, to un like, I don't know how, how to say it, like something stronger and to, to not make you free enough. But the people from the beginning until the end, they were always with, with this action. They, they were never against because it, the Yemenis, we, they, they love to, to, you know, we hoped in the revolution to move, uh, to join the world. Now we are, I don't know in what century we back, we, we come back to what century, you know. It's, it's really horrible what's happening there. And unfortunately, you know, uh, the world is blinded and uh, voila, just uh, they speak about the country when there is just only a seasonal um, interest. Uh, Yes, and I'm sure for for people, you know, the, the fellow protesters and, and Yemenis, you know, for you, they I'm sure they kind of gave you the courage to continue, just like seeing the, the artwork that you were, um, you know, painting the city with, I'm sure gave them the courage um, and not necessarily hope, but um, a, a spark of, of brightness and, and the... Well, well. I, well, thank you so much, but it's... it's uh... The matter now, it's it's a chaos we are living in, and 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 unfortunately, because if we had as people one enemy, we will face. But unfortunately, you have many enemies, and you don't know who. And this is why the people are paralyzed in in Yemen. They are, you know, without any action. People they ask, you know, why they are not moving. They they moved in the beginning, but now they they feel okay if they move their issue will be represented by the other side. And if they move against the other side, they will be represented by the other side. So unfortunately we are, this situation is only serving the, uh, the interest of the warring parties. And now imagine we lost the sense of the unity. Now if people are speaking, okay, we can be two countries, three countries, whatever, just we end, we end this. And, um, we have a heavy legacy of tyranny, colonization, and radicalism, uh, radicals. So it's three, uh, three heavy uh, legacy that we have to face as people. Look, uh, it's maybe as we think now, it's in the horizon, it's never going, to, it, it will never go, uh, change. But the history is telling us that uh, nothing stay like this, you know, it will never the people will continue like this in in this situation they will until they they have the, the control in their hands it, it must happen you know it will never uh, stay like this but the thing I, we should not care about ah uh, we have to have a hub or we have to have we have to have an action and work that's it don't care about how you feel good or bad it's not uh, my business it's not it should not be like this we have just to think about one thing we have to take actions we have to 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 work that's it. Um, looking more recently, how your work has changed since you left Yemen. So I know you were in, in Egypt for one year and now you're based in France. So you, it sounds like, in, are engaging with more kind of global themes. Um, is it still under the lens of the MENA region or are you looking um, kind of more, more broadly at, at war and conflict um, you know, globally? No, I uh, now my 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 uh, okay. In in the beginning, it was international. My work started to be international from Yemen. It's not because I I came just to Europe. 
uh, and then I moved to Europe, it gives me accessibility to more, um, more discussion, not in the level just with the media or with the people, also with the politici politicians, like I meet some, uh, you know, officials from France, from uh, Germany, and, uh, um, and more activists and more journals and more artists. Um, but now the idea from, uh, for me, it's, it's the idea of war. I'm now discussing this idea. So, so this is why I'm trying since like one year or more to, to go like into other conflict areas, like in Libya, Iraq, uh, Myanmar, Congo, uh, which is witness, witnessed many uh, back then in civil wars and, uh, and um, Sudan and any country that faced even Ukraine, if I have the chance. The, the thing is this, uh, I'm still connected with as a Yemenite, when you are a, a Yemenite, you have a, this paper, which is the passport, it chained you. you, you don't have the access. It's not like when you are uh, Europeans or Americans where you can move or other powerful country where you can move freely. So, and also, you know, it's, it's not easy to have this. And also um, the sponsor who will help you to, to do this, who will fund you to, to do this. I was about to go to Afghanistan also because I was organizing before Taliban took power. And unfortunately this, doesn't it doesn't continue this is why i had this mural about called the um the the supreme council of terrorism which i did in in berlin and um it represent five the five uh, um prominent countries leaders in 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 the un council and uh, yes, we had this kind, I believe, as uh, me and my generation, we believe that this is one of the real uh, terrorism. Um, so I, uh, to go back, you know, yes, the idea of, of the war, it's still now, I'm, I'm not just thinking because now, unfortunately, and sadly that we are going to move in, in more wars. If you see now the, the tourist, the, the vehicle of the, the war and uh, the war and, and the the weaponizing every nation now is just racing into weaponizing more and to have more weapons and to have more uh, deadly, deadly weapons you know you know it's deadly of course but more mass deadly weapons and it's horrible as young as our generation me and you and and your audience we should we should not stay calm we should start from now because Tomorrow we'll face it in our face, you know. I, I think I'm, yes, I'm now, a little, I'm older, you know, 35 years old, and I, I believe I am losing the energy, the motive to move as for someone who's in 20s. And yeah, I mean, the idea of war is, is in my, my, uh, my, uh, my project and uh, my uh, obsession because I faced the war, I felt the war in every meaning, you know personally and uh, um, I don't know how to explain it. I, I'm sure, sorry you for have my a very English. personal interface. You've had a yes, very personal exactly. experience so, so, with war. Yeah. Yes, thank you. So I, I mean, the war in general, it's not just because of Yemen will end. That means I have to stop to discuss this. No, it's it's going to be my my um, my obsession. I, it's, right, it's, and have, you've built such a fight. platform so far. So um, yeah. of of these of these themes and um, and now you have a following now for no i'm i'm going to follow this even if it is in other places because i'm i'm i wish that if i can go to uh, to highlight and to send or to to paint about the stories of people who face war in in their countries you know it's something uh, different than i have painted in in many places in europe and around the world but it's different when you do something for the people who are like this place is find facing a war and it, there is there is no life the life is escaping the hobby is escaping and to give uh, to send a message through the work in this area it's something meaningful more than to paint just in, in a peaceful uh, friendly zone you know it's different no it's, it's very important and through your art you're able to give a voice to the the people and really, well I hope. I hope you are yes and really <laughs> emphasize and and kind of visualize for international audiences what these local um communities are experiencing so 
Um, well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate learning more about your work and um, we will certainly keep up with your um, continued, continued journey as an artist. Thank you so much, Brooke, and uh, good luck to all of you.